lime juice typically, and then some form of sugar, which is typically gonna be a syrup. We're gonna put those ingredients all together to make a balanced cocktail. The cocktail I'm gonna be making today is a daiquiri. The daiquiri is my favorite sour, but the daiquiri can come in many different forms. I'm sure you've all heard of the skinny margarita. I'm sure you've all heard of the whiskey sour. Typically, it's the same idea. We're gonna combine the booze and the acid and the sugar. We're gonna mix it up. We're gonna make a cocktail. My favorite form is the daiquiri. The reason why I like the daiquiri is because I love rum, and it's the best way for me to showcase a rum so I can really still get the flavor profile of the rum. So the reason why I'm using a coupe glass is because the coupe glass would be used in a traditional daiquiri. That cocktail is served up. And a lot of us have heard of a daiquiri served in a lot of different types of ways, but actually a traditional daiquiri should be served up. Really it's about showcasing the flavor profile of whatever it is that you're using. What we're using is rum. So the rum I'm gonna use here is a rum called Probitas. Uh, this rum is uh, a blend of both worlds when it comes to two of my favorite Caribbean islands. We're talking about Barbados and we're talking about Jamaica. Two of my favorites in terms of rum production. So this is a coffee column still, four square to Jamaican pot still rum from Hand Then Estate. It has a really nice sort of funky quality to it. Typically the Jamaican rums have a nice quality to it. So this we're going to use an ounce and a half to two ounces of white rum. We're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. You can squeeze your own lime juice if you want. I'm using this Finest Call single press pasteurized lime juice. The reason why I'm using this is because I think it's a really great product. I think it tastes delicious and it doesn't spoil and I don't have to squeeze my own limes. Next, I'm gonna use the Jafar gum syrup. A gum syrup is a syrup that has a thicker texture than a traditional simple syrup. And it also has gum arabic in there. So for me, it gives a really nice feel to, a uh, really nice mouth feel to the cocktail. Allows that sugar to really back up all those other flavor profiles that are in there. All right, so now I'm gonna add ice to this tin and we're gonna give it a nice shake. So whenever I shake a cocktail, I always want to make sure that I shake it vigorously because there's a couple purposes for shaking a cocktail. One of those purposes obviously is to chill. As you can see, the tin is nice and icy and frosty. The other purpose is really for the dilution. So I need to really shake well so that I can get good dilution on the cocktail. That water really helps to balance out some of those other flavor profiles as well. And it allows us to have a little bit more volume in the cocktail, but it also helps with the flavors just meshing a little bit better together. So I'm gonna take this ice, throw it out. You might wonder why I'm icing the glass. It's because I'm bougie. The reason why is because the cocktail is going to taste better. A cold cocktail with a cold glass works great. Now I'm going to double strain into this cocktail glass coupe. The reason why I double strain is because of that right there. I've already strained out my citrus. So really I just want to keep that ice out of the cocktail. Ice can kind of be your enemy in a cocktail because it's going to continue dilution. So if I put ice chips into a cocktail that are already melting, the process of melting has already started, what's going to end up happening is it's going to add more water to the cocktail. So if I'm going to take the time and energy to measure something out to make sure it's perfect and accurate, I don't want to add that extra ice in there because what that's going to do is it's going to make the cocktail a little bit watered down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to garnish. I'm just gonna cut a lime wheel. The only time I'm usually gonna do a wedge is if I have the intention of them actually adding that citrus into the cocktail, because I don't know if you've ever tried to squeeze a lime wheel, but it's not that easy. The other thing is I don't want them squeezing the lime wheel into this cocktail. This cocktail is already well balanced and delicious, so I don't wanna give them the opportunity to screw it up. Cheers. For this then and now cocktail, we're gonna do a little bit more of a modern version. We're gonna to stick to the same exact template. So we're gonna be using booze, acid, lemon or lime juice, and sugar again. Let's get going. First thing we're gonna use is I'm gonna use a raspberry brandy. Brandy is basically distilled fruit juice. So in this case, it's raspberry. This particular product has a really, really amazing fresh fruit flavor, and it comes from St. George, which is the first American craft distiller. So we're gonna use two ounces of this product. Then I'm gonna use three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then three quarters of an ounce of a lychee puree. 
I love this puree because it's got my puree and my syrup because a lot of times when I add a puree to a cocktail, I still have to back it up with some sugar. So this is kind of like a two-on-one process and it works out great. We're gonna add ice to this cocktail. I wanna fill it all the way up. See, sometimes people don't fill their shaker tins all the way up. We wanna fill it all the way up because we're looking for a nice dilution. I'm gonna dump this ice out. Nice chilled frosty glass for us. And now I'm gonna double strain this. And we're gonna garnish with a dehydrated lime well. The reason why I'm using a dehydrated lime well is number one, because it's in vogue. It's sort of like something that a lot of people are using right now. In terms of a restaurant or bar, it looks really cool, but also it's, it stays well. It doesn't spoil, so this is something I can use to save a few bucks. Let's taste this bad boy. Cheers. All right, you have joined us, ladies and gentlemen, just in time to see this cocktail, today's cocktail. Whoops, a daisy. There we go, I'm fine straining this cocktail. Get all those shards of ice out of there. Ooh. Wait till you see what cocktail this is today. And a little bit of nutmeg going to the wide shot. All right, and of course this makes all of my drinks just a little greater. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dean Cernils. Thanks for joining us on uh, Behind the Glass with Dean Cernils. Great intro there from, uh, from our guest of the day. I'll get on to him in a moment. Uh, Behind the Glass is, of course, a, uh, a bartender magazine show that, uh, that shares tips and tricks and trivia and techniques. Uh, everything that we talk about on this show uh, is something that you as a bartender could take and use behind the bar. Whether it's one of our really bad jokes coming up, you could take that bad joke as a great fun way to, uh, to entertain your guests at the bar. Great cocktails and of course, fabulous guests. But before I get onto that, first I have to sip my new drink. Oh, it's beautiful, it's a Christmas cocktail. But let me bring in for you our trick of the day. Whoop! Here's our bar trick of the day, guys. Let me just prop this up a little bit. Well, I can't do that because it's, it's going to be unbalanced. So, and you know how uh, balance is important for bartenders, you know. <laughs> so here's the trick. I have a uh, an empty plate or a saucer, a wine glass or any glass, of course. And just a few odds and ends here to help distract people. And some red wine. This is actually some port. A nice tawny port I had. The goal of this trick or challenge when we present it to our guests and of course again our bar challenges if you're just tuning in are silly little tricks it's not even magic most of the time that it's a challenge that we can present to our guests give them all this stuff while I run off and work service bar or introduce myself to a new guest or, or run some food or finish making up some cocktails this entertains the guests while I'm not even in front of them so the challenge is Put this right here. There's my mom checking in on me, Rosemary Goddard. Hello, Rosemary. There it is. The challenge of this now is to get all of that wine or some of that wine into the glass without touching the plate. So the challenge is get that wine into the glass without touching the plate. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm gonna go run some food and everything else. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my bar and get us ready so that I can teach you this brand new Christmassy cocktail. Thanks for joining us. If you're here for some tips, tricks, trivia, and techniques about bartending, you found the right place. You are Behind the Glass with Dean Cernials. <laughs>
here we go with uh, with our drink of the day. Uh, today's drink isn't uh, really heavily buried in, uh, in a lot of techniques and whatnot. It's actually a fairly simple cocktail, but I wanted to do a uh, a new cocktail for the holiday season, right? Uh, and eggnog is the place to be in the holiday season. So I've got some eggnog, uh, and let's just get right to this cocktail. All right. As you know, uh, my mixing glass mechanics. I like to start with a glass full of ice. I build every drink in my mixing glass. All right. And today yeah, I'm using some Papa Pilar's dark rum. All right, getting a good sexy pour here. All right. So rum and eggnog, pretty standard stuff. That's really not off the grid too much. Here is Tuwaka, Tuwaka liqueur. It's a vanilla liqueur. Just half an ounce of the Tuwaka. And a couple of dashes of chocolate bitters. My favorite bitters of them all, the chocolate bitters. And you can go a little heavy on the chocolate bitters if you want because we're coming in here with some cream and, uh, and it's a little heavier. So three ounces of eggnog. Now I'm actually using the almond eggnog right now to shake and bake this cocktail up. Uh, it's quite delicious. It's a little lighter in the flavor. Uh, if you use uh, cow, uh, cow milk, uh, almond milk, uh, or uh, eggnog uh, made with uh, traditional cream, uh, it's going to have a little bit more of a, uh, a more rich, mouthy feel, if, that's, uh, if that makes sense to you. All right, so let's get in here. And we'll shake this one up. Give it a little hammer. See how that's on. Let's it up. All right. My glass is a little chilled. Boom. And we come in for our strain. Now I have a drink. And the lovely Allison, my producer, has a drink. And of course, a little nutmeg right on top. There it is. There is our uh, holiday cocktail. Can we see the recipe there? All right, it's the chocolate noggin. The noggin. <laughs> Just dropping that cocktail off to my lovely producer. The chocolate noggin with uh, dark rum and vanilla liqueur, some eggnog, chocolate bitter, shake and strain. Uh, that says over ice. You can, I actually shook it uh, straight, uh, but you can shake it over ice as well. Your choice, however you want to love it. Uh, chocolate noggin. Noggin is actually a, uh, a word for a uh, small portion of liquor, a small drink, a uh, quarter of a pint, I think it is. About a quarter of a pint. We've got a really fun show planned for you, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some trivia. We've got a, a bad joke that you can use behind the bar. And we also have a great guest coming today. Uh, Casey Wallen uh, is a, a fabulous friend of mine. He's uh, been in the business for a long, long time making cocktails. And he's going to share just some really basic concepts of how to create your very own cocktails with us later on the show. So don't go away and get a pen and paper. Write down this trivia question. All right, I hope you're ready. Here we go. East Coast entrepreneur Frederick Tudor was better known as... In uh, Bad Bar Jokes with Dean Cerny. A pair of jumper cables walk into a bar. The bartender says, Okay, I'll serve you. But don't start anything. This is All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. A uh, little fun joke. We will be back with you later on with the answer to that question. Uh, and, of course, the answer to the trivia question as well.
uh, or the answer to the trivia and the um, the bar trick answer at the end. All right, Johnny Fantastic's joining us. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, we're going live, and the uh, the video will stay up there. So, <laughs> very cool, very cool. Uh, Rob Houston's with us today too. Thanks, buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I get to uh, I get to sort of work with this fellow. Uh, he's actually inspired me quite a bit. Uh, as you know, I do a lot of flair. I do a lot of mixology, but I actually just spent uh, half an hour chatting with this guy uh, for Wednesday's episode of uh, Beyond the Glass, One Drink with Casey Wallen. And uh, he actually taught me quite a bit just in that little One Drink with episode coming out on Wednesday. So I think he's got a lot more knowledge for us to, uh, to share with us right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ever cool Casey Wallen. Coming soon. Hey, he's here right now. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Casey Wallen. Hey, how are you, my friend? I'm great. Look, that video is fantastic. It makes me look way cooler than I am. I'm glad that I have really talented friends to be able to produce a video like that. You know, you really like, do have great. talented friends. I've been watching your videos and uh, I love how the camera's moving around and, and the the lighting in there, we've been watching it and kind of looking at it and go, what did he mean for the lighting to be like that? And it's so kind of cool and moody. Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's, it's funny, Dean, because um, actually, you know, because everything's shot in 4K. So we've got this, you can really do so many different things, so many different filters. So the, the concept of this show is Mr. Wallen's Neighborhood is like a straight bite on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So that intro uh, on the video with, uh, or on the page where it's sort of like coming into Mr. Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and all that, it's really like a grainy shot in the 70s. And he basically just like has the ability in post to put that filter on it. So all of that that's happening there, we're trying to make it look like shooting it in at that time period. So you're putting filters on it to make it a little grainy and to make it look a little uh, old yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a 4K video. So we'll have other other stuff on the on the YouTube channel, the stuff that we have coming up, and we have different things that are shot in different styles. But it sort of all has its own feel. Each Mr. Rogers neighborhood, everything sort of every little part of the neighborhood had its own little thing and way that it was done. So the then and now cocktails and the cocktails that we're making for that spot will be specifically in that style, and then distillery tour, tours or something else will be shot more in a you know in a regular lighting or more of like a you know modern light right type so of it'll thing. switch so up from episode to it's episode fun a little bit kind of depending on where you're at yeah exactly tell me about you the, can go uh, visit the, the puppets. Now cocktail con or uh, the concept you've got so what i've learned from from the, this industry is so what happened is i started in arizona started doing really well i had a great mentor a guy named jason asher who taught me a lot of really cool things yeah, and yeah um and i was working with the, at a bar with him and he was he was very uh, helpful but go go buy a flavor bible if you're interested in making cocktails and it's sort of a, a great field guide to be able to understand how to combine flavors long and short of it was i said hey i'm doing pretty good out here but i want to i want to cut my teeth i want to see if if i got it so i moved to new york city and i started working in new york city and once a big contest in new york City in the Bacardi Legacy Contest twice for New York City. Uh, in the finals, always a bridesmaid. Look, I have some great friends that won those contests. But anyway, um, so when I'm the then and now cocktails, what I learned by the process of all of this is that when I moved to New York City, I made a cocktail for my beverage director, a guy named Rob Kruger, this place called Extra Fancy. And Rob said, Oh, that's nice. That's kind of like a riff on a Manhattan, right? And I was like, Not really, because I wasn't. Like Manhattan never entered my brain when I was conceiving of this cocktail, but when I sort of connected dots in reverse, I realized, sure, that could definitely be near a Manhattan. So what I did is I thought, started learning the classic templates as opposed to being confined to 
uh, parent choices, right? But more just using the idea of what the template is, like the ounces, this and this and this together. And if I s sort of mess it up a little bit, then I then I could take these mo classic cocktails, the then cocktail, and I could turn it into a more modern version, a, a now cocktail, because a lot of the classics were also created because the spirits were shitty. And so they were mixing right. it up to, to, so they could drink it, right? And now we have so many incredible producers and so much incredible product out there that making cocktails is more about trying to highlight what's there as opposed to mask what's there. So I think that using classic templates is a great idea, but we can apply modern ingredients and make it great or equally great, you know, because the classics are classics for a reason, they're delicious. Um, but that being said, um, the idea is to teach people classic templates so that they can, you just made a daiquiri. I mean, you can apply a lot of different spirit choices and make the same decisions about balance and you're going to have a good cocktail at the end. So it allows you to take some focus off making the cocktail balanced in terms of the components. There you go. Right. And it focuses more on allowing somebody to really explore flavor profile. Because if you can't get a balanced cocktail, it doesn't matter how good your flavor choices are, it's not gonna taste good. So if you've got something to start with that's already balanced, then you can make those choices. And then it's cool too, Dean, because then you get into the subtleties of, you know, riffing the classic so you're not off that template anymore, but it's always a good starting spot. It's in terms of foundation for making a cocktail, it's always a good starting spot. So that's what the then and now cocktails are. Absolutely, absolutely. Having the uh, having those classics as the as the baseline, uh, I use that every day. I mean, um, as you know, uh, Casey works with American beverage marketers, uh, Finest Call, Real, uh, Galima, and Master of Mixes. As do I. Uh, we hire Casey out for some special. Actually, when I can't handle a project anymore, we now hand it to to Casey. So, <laughs> thank you, Casey. Um, yeah, you're welcome. But, uh, uh, like I said. Yeah, we've been in a lot of talks. I've been like, hey, man, can you just call Casey? Let's get Casey in. So, uh, yeah, happy to have you in. Uh, cool. Everything you just talked about kind of sets us up for uh, what you want to teach today. Of course, Behind the Glass with Dean Cerniels is all about uh, giving the viewers something that they can go back behind the bar, whether it's a bar trick or a bar joke or something silly all the way up to uh, meeting the best bartenders in the world. I've got Flair guys and the, the Flair Mixology guys and, and, a, and a guy like you that has so much mixology knowledge uh, that I'm learning from you uh, just listening to you talk today. So, ladies and gentlemen, Casey Wallen teaches. I'm going to teach the Daisy template. And I, I would love for you to participate with me, Dean, so that we can sort love of... To illustrate a point um the the d did you guys happen to get the recipe that i sent you is that possible to show or it can be in the comments or something uh the daisy recipe uh correct i mean have... oh man you guys are good you guys are Look they're really Alice really, is going to try to put really you on this camera gross. as well watch watch my amazing producer allison here i can't tell you how much sleep we lose at night trying to figure this stuff out rolling around to hey, you know out. what though? That cocktail, that slightly, that's not the right recipe. Oh, we can fix it. We can fix it. Where would you like it, James? No, 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 it's oh. good. It's it, it, it. Just two things were just two things were mixed. Are you gonna do it live? We should do this live. Man, you're a, you're a master. Anyways, yeah. it's two ounces of spirit. There you go. It's three quarters of an ounce of alcohol modifier. It's three quarters of an ounce of lemon or lime juice, and yeah. then it's a rich simple syrup. And as you were speaking before, with with the Real products that, that we both right. work with, that amazing company, you know, with the Real products, that's basically a two parts to one simple syrup. So that's like a rich simple syrup. And a rich right. simple syrup is two parts sugar, one part water. So thick simple syrup. Right. So what we're going to so do the, is uh, the I'm going to syrup just, in this recipe, just as Dallas is writing it down, uh, is um, how much is the simple syrup? It's uh, half, 50, ounce. half ounce. Half ounce of simple syrup. So it, yeah, so you're going to go two ounce, three quarter, three quarter, half. That's what I all tell right. bartenders all the time. If you can remember that little that little phrase right there, two, three quarter, three quarter, half. All right. Yeah, she can't do this live. Can she? She can. That's okay. Can, she, can you swip, swap our cameras? Out? No, don't worry. Yeah. Give us two seconds. We're going to swap the cameras so that you're on this side, and then we're going to put... 
Yeah, the, uh, the graphic back up, I think. Welcome to my house, everyone. It's pretty cool. I love all the spirits you've got there. It's uh, quite a collection there. You know what, Dean? The worst part is that like a lot of those bottles are about a third full, and I just can't bring myself to. Um, I just can't bring myself to finish them because I just want to have them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. Look at my girl going here. She's a master. Man, Whew. I know. Better be careful, Dean. Some other She's people awesome. might need production. All right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go through this Daisy template, and I'm just going to let Dean sort of. I don't have a cocktail rest, uh, a cocktail plan specifically, so I'm going to let Dean choose. So, Dean, we're going to go vodka, gin, agave spirits, rum, cognac, or whiskey. Um, let's go tequila. All right, tequila it is. I know you're a big fan of tequila go... yourself. Yeah, so tequila, do you want to do... Uh, Blanco, Reposado, Añejo. I actually have a, a Reposado in front of me here. Perfect. Let's do a, a Reposado. Um, right here. I'm going to take this one. So I just pulled this out of my back bar. This is the Ateleguas. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, tequila, Highland tequilas. It's amazing Thanks because they use a double method. They have the this this loophole into their production process where they're able to use half stone crushed, half roller mill, and they combine it, blend it to make what they see at the Leguas. Hey, the other, the other side piece on this is that see at the Leguas is the original producer of the Patron juice. Um, so there's kind of a really cool story there. Again, I'm about the stories and the heritage of things. So uh, look into it. Sieta Leguas, seven leagues named after Pancho Villa's horse who rode from Arandas to the village of Tequila in the shortest time ever. 49 minutes or something like this. Anyway, so... 49 right, minutes. Dean, How fast was that horse? He must have been driving a I Mustang. Mean, Listen, man. It's on, there you go. There's one of bar jokes, baby. Uh, it's on the cover of this uh, tequila brand. Uh, anyways, yeah. Long story about Sip Delegas. We're not going to get into that right now. So, Reposado Tequila, two There ounces. we go. Take a second. Is that fall. recipe right? Nailed it. And it could be lemon or lime juice, but lemon's fine. The idea is that you have to put acid in the cocktail. Got it. Sweet. So, Perfect so job. Thank you. Two Allison. ounces. So I'm going to go two ounces. So he selected a Reposado tequila, two ounces. Perfect. Now I'm going to ask you about this alcoholic modifier, Dean. So we can do a liqueur. We could do a sherry. We could do a vermouth. We could do anything that's an alcoholic modifier. You select for me what you want. So sherry, uh, liqueur, um, vermouth. What do you, th what do you say? All right, sorry, I've got my uh, tequila in there. Um, vermouth. Vermouth, excellent. Sweet vermouth, dry vermouth, Bianco vermouth. I just, uh, I just got a bottle of uh, Antica Formula. Carfano. Oh, you fancy. Uh, Can I do that with you, sir? I got sir? one too, baby. Let's do it together. All right, well, Allison Antica. got the bottle of. Appreciate uh, you. Allison got the bottle of bubbles from our. Uh, <laughs> Recording of one drink with, so I'm getting my favorite. So how much of this is three quarters of this alcoholic? Three quarters of an right? ounce, exactly. So like I said, this can be vermouth, this can be sherry, this could be port, this could be fruit liqueur, this could be ginger liqueur, grapefruit liqueur, whatever. It could be any of those. It could be coconut. It could be Three quarters of an ounce of alcoholic modifier. Now, and when I say alcoholic modifier, I what I mean... Could I use rum and coconut rum? Is coconut a modifier or the base? The coconut rum or a, or a flavored rum? That's a good question. So I think what I was just... <coughs> excuse me. Um, what I was just saying was that... Um, it has to do with alcohol percentage, Dean. You know, like right. I don't want to if I, if I've got a coconut rum that's forty percent alcohol, so be categorized as a spirit. Then you know that's then I'm gonna then I'm gonna then I can use it as as a as a split base, right? Right. And if okay, I have a forty percent coconut rum, I'll just use that as my rum. You know, so if it's if it's a lower alcohol percentage, which a lot of 
you know, coconut rums are lower alcohol percentage. Right. A lot of the flavored spirits, are, you know, the cinnamon whiskeys and, uh, and all those different spirits that have been sweetened with flavor are usually in at 30, 35%. So can we use those as the modifier as well? As long as it's not 40%, I think you're good, man. Like, okay. and, and actually that's good I, rule. I, I should, there's, there's a few caveats again, but I don't want to go too deep into those things. Cause you know, there's like a Genepi, which is 40% alcohol. Cronin Swedish punch is 40% alcohol. Those still work great as modifiers because of the sugar content. So they're, they're not necessarily like chartreuse is high alcohol. That's something that can be used in right. wonderful in a cocktail as well. So when I say alcohol modifier, for the most part, for just the average, what I can go pick up at the liquor store that's not too specialized, um, a liqueur is going to be something that's a lower alcohol percentage. Cool. All right. Uh, all we right. So next? now we're going to do lemon or lime juice. Lemon juice. Lemon juice. Got it. Perfect. I already have lemon juice. So I'm going to go three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. So tequila All right, so now we've got and, three quarters uh, of an ounce. and sweet vermouth and lemon juice. Correct. So now if I am going to add my syrup, I can use – Let uh, I'll give you a few options because I want to make sure I have it. Uh, yeah, I don't have so them all either. We could, we could go – and and if I don't like what your your if I don't like your choice, then I'm gonna I'm gonna veto. I'm just kidding. The whole concept of this is that no matter what we make, it's gonna work and it is gonna work. So right. I've got strawberry, I've got pineapple, I've got guava, I've got uh, orgeat, which might be nice. I've got uh, 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 pomegranate, grenadine, coconut. I think that if you want, do you want my opinion? I would love to hear your opinion. That's why I've got you here. <laughs> this is great. I love these kind of shows where they want to hear my opinions. Um, I think go. I think that we go. I said we do our job. I think we're going to do our job. Oh, that was the second one. And the reason why I want to do our job, and I'm going to use this Jafar or shot here. You gotcha. got, you got an excellent or shot too. Max or master mixes, you grab that everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you can get most, this grocery, at, stores uh, that, most yeah. grocery stores, the uh, higher end liquor stores. Uh, Orsha is an almond flavored syrup, and, uh, and it's from Master of Mixes. Join us. And I'm using one called Jaffard. It's a French Orsha. So, what Orsha is, right. that is uh, almond syrup that has um, orange flower water in it. So it's like this right. a little bit floral experience. So the reason why I wanted to select this is because I think this would go really, really well with the barrel. And when I say the barrel, I say, okay, I've got a repo salad tequila is aged in right. an oak barrel. I've got a uh, vermouth, which is also in a barrel. Um, and it's got a bunch of aromatics and a bunch of um, uh, herbs and different botanicals that go into a vermouth and the style that the vermouth right. is made in specifically Carpano Antica. I felt like that those components, the barrel components, the vanilla, um, and for the caramel flavor profile will go really nice with the uh, almond. All right. Kind of keep, that make it a little nutty. Delicious. But according so to the ounce. theory, according to your theory, we don't, we don't have to really even know the, the backgrounds on the flavors or the fact that you're talking about the, <laughs> Uh, connecting the barrel flavors and whatnot according to the 100 to the formula we don't have to know that of course it's always great to know that so that you can reach for uh spirits or any ingredient that would work better than others all right yeah so yes correct correct sir correct and i'm gonna prove our point a third time i'm just gonna, i'm just gonna literally what i'm gonna do dean as I'm just gonna turn around and grab a bottle. I'm not even gonna look at what I'm getting. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab uh, gin. For so gin. exciting! I've got a little gin here. Two you know ounce. what? I had to. I had a yeah. gin for you earlier. You're you're Gosh. a lovely man. So I'm gonna use forged gin. I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna grab me another uh, liqueur. Uh, Fry de Bois. This is a strawberry liqueur. 
This is from a company, the same company, Jafar, that did that syrup. I'm going to use the lemon again because I got it right here. I have the uh, strawberry real out. Uh, it was actually my prediction. I thought you might ask for strawberry real when we were putting a syrup in. Smart guy. I also have strawberry real right here because I was going to use it, Dean. <laughs> was that but your second choice? I'll tell you this. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I want to actually I want to add this guava because uh, strawberry and guava go excellent together. Oh, so they sure that's, do. I wanted to show how I can say, all right, I want to get these two components together, right? Like I want to get strawberry in here and I want to get guava in here. And when I use this template, I can do it in a way that's going to be easier to balance because I'm not putting strawberry syrup and guava syrup, right? Because that's going to take more citrus to balance out that sugar. So what I'm using is an alcoholic modifier in there with strawberry. Right. So it allows me to get the strawberry flavor profile, but I'm getting the guava too. So that's sort of the reason why I wanted to do that. Now I've got two cocktails. Cool. I'm going to shake them up. Got to add some, got to add some ice. Oop. You've got two cocktails. Well, why not, man? <laughs> I've been putting it all in one. Did I miss something? <laughs> Maybe. I must have. <laughs> when you switched I mean, over I to gin, so. I added it to the same better, glass. I'm making a better story. <laughs> it's going to be a much greater story. I'm just going to add a little lemon juice. Looks like I'm making a, a tiki cocktail today. Well, actually, I think, I think, that, might actually, I think that actually might be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think any of the choices you, were strange. You, okay, so when I grabbed gin, did you put gin in there too? Yeah. And then I oh, added man, the strawberry this real. Um, this is going to be amazing. You know what, man? I think I think what I'm going to do, Dean, is I think I'm just going to combine these as well. Well, that's what you were planning to do anyway, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm just going to combine the ingredients also. All right. I was going to put it in two cocktail glasses, but I think I'm just going to do one. And I think well, I don't think that this I don't think that this ruins the concept of what we're talking about here because at the end no, of the day, I actually added a little using, bit more lemon to it. Well, I added a little bit more lemon just to try Dean. to balance it out a bit. I think. Listen, Dean, I think your cocktail is going to be a bit off because uh, this this template works perfectly. So if you didn't follow the template exactly and you added extra lemon, it's probably going to be off. Mine's going to be perfectly on. And the interesting wow. part is I used two ounces of gin, two ounces of Reposado tequila, <laughs> vermouth, strawberry liqueur, lemon, guava, and uh, orgeat. Like, this I'm is losing be, track. I'm losing of, track. But cocktail. I do know that if you take a quarter ounce of lime juice out of a margarita, it's not a margarita anymore. Who told you that, man? All right. All right. You and are I mean, a you talker. Called, you called it. I, I wasn't prepared for this, but now I'm ready. Good. I love to hear that. Because uh, I wasn't going to do a tiki cocktail, but now that I'm doing a tiki cocktail, I guess I'll grab a tiki glass. Oh, you got me on the tiki glass. There's got to be oh, one in this buddy. room somewhere. Got to be a pro, Dean. I got Allison working on it. It looked like I paused there for a second. Uh, you know what? I won't use the tiki glass. I don't want you to feel bad. I could just use no, this glass. No, no, too, if you want please, me to. please. This is a tiki-ish glass. Look, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I can put it. I, look, I'll put it in the. I'll put it in a Collins. No, 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 no. That cocktail is is far better. I feel bad for you, man. I'm just gonna. And I, man, I got these. I got these these flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and. I'm going to flower it up. Yeah, flower it up. Hey, did you take that off your shirt? Let's try. <laughs> Look at that. You're doing some magic right there, right? Just boom. Pluck that right off your shirt. All right, let's, let's try this. Let's try it out, buddy. Yeah, we're in this. Godspeed, my friend. Godspeed. Cheers to you. Thank you very much, sir. I mean, it's quite delicious, actually. Couple of old pros, yours is not huh? good. No, yours actually. I know. I'm sorry. Yours is off balance. I know. So probably doesn't taste good, but mine, really, to be honest with you, is delicious. So that's two daisies. 
for the price of one. Mine's a little lemon forward. It's it's more like a, you know like a traditional margarita. <laughs> Are you from Canada? <laughs> Very cool. Hey, let's get uh, let's get your contact information up on the screen here and take a look at where we can find Casey Wallen. Uh, oh, that's me. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, just step to the side. It's oh, wait, always other the way. other side. Okay. Yeah, but nobody can get it right, nor can I. Um, yeah, Carpano needs to still in my spotlight. Yeah, the class. Un undoubtedly. Uh, Mr. Wallen's Neighborhood. Uh, it's a fabulous yeah. show. Uh, new internet show. You just uh, started yourself, right? Yeah, I'm just, it's just baby steps right now, man. But we're, we're getting it together. Um, got some really cool stuff in the works. Our production calendar for the coming year is, is pretty good. So uh, big highlight is I'm going to be going down to Tequila and doing a motorcycle trip with uh, Guillermo from Fortaleza. And we're going to be wow. uh, getting some footage of that. And then we're going to do a distillery tour. Uh, I've got a distillery tour that's coming already on the show. Uh, for a distillery out here called Grand Canyon Distillery. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I'm always putting stuff out there. Uh, um, I want to educate people. I want people to be able to make fantastic cocktails at home. And as you said earlier, Dean, our industry is changing, so I want to be able to support the industry that's that's got me to where I am. So uh, yeah. thanks for your time, man. Thanks hey, for having me thank on. Thank you. Great job today, man. Uh, made a, a great cocktail here, a uh, kind of non-traditional cocktail, but we still followed the real rules. So, very cool. I mean, mine's balanced, Dean. I, I don't know. Mine's balanced. <laughs> mine's just the way I wanted it to be. <laughs> that's the that's the key, right? That's the whole key to cocktails, right there. That's the whole key. I always say, listen, listen, Dean. People will drink a shitty cocktail from somebody they love. Well, I've proven that. <laughs> but you know, I think if you can make a great cocktail and they love you, it's even better. So let let us help you out, Dean. <laughs> Dean, thank you so much for having me on, man. Thank you. We'll see you on Wednesday night. Uh, Casey and I have already recorded Wednesday night's show. It's really fabulous. You'll have a lot of fun. Uh, check out uh, Beyond the Glass with Casey Wallen or One Drink with Casey Wallen. All right? Cool, Casey. We'll check you out Thank online you. at uh, Mr. Wallen's Neighborhood. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Special thanks to Casey Wallen. That was, uh, that was great fun. And then you know, that really outlines just how easy it is to uh, create your own cocktails. If you're following that template, uh, he was following a template for two cocktails. I missed that memo. Put them all in one, and it still tastes great, even with the little extra lemon I put in there. It was beautiful. All right, here we go. Let's get on and show you our uh, bar trick of the day. Or should we do trivia first? Allison, what would you rather do? Um, bar trick. Bar trick of the day. Here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, bar tricks are actually the way I started doing magic. For anybody that knows that I do magic, uh, I'm a professional magician for a while. Now I just kind of hack at it, and the uh, local magicians laugh at me. We have a glass and a, uh, a saucer or a plate full of uh, red wine. In this case, it's it's some port. Uh, I want you to see how this trick works. I'll take a wedge of lemon right off of here and a couple of matches. Here we go, that match sticking right up just like that. Can we cut to, uh, cut to the side shot for me, Allison? Thank you so much. Look at that, I've got the uh, match just stuck in that lemon there and watch how I place it right there so that match is sticking up all right i'll light the match with another match and the wine goes in the glass just like so Isn't that kind of cool? Very good. White shot. And can you take me back to the white shot? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. Very cool. So the wine went in the glass without touching the plate. I did not touch the plate. And those were the rules. The rules are very tricky on these things. So be careful. All right. 
<laughs> Allison's commenting, so that's why she couldn't change the screen. She's like, oh, I have to comment on that. <laughs> uh, great bar trick. Lots of fun. Uh, now we have a uh, trivia challenge. Our challenge trivia. Let's find out the answer to that. Of course, trivia brought to you today by DNA Trivia, which starts at 10 o'clock right here on the same Dean Cerniel's channel that you're watching. All right, we're playing with this. The question was, Frederick Tudor, um, Northeastern or, or East Coast entrepreneur, Frederick Tudor was better known with this nickname. Was he known as A, Samuel Adams, B, the New England Wine Prince, C, the Boston Ice King, or D, the ice truck killer. Frederick Tudor was the uh, really the first to start selling this item or, or an item. And, uh, and he became very well known for selling this item. Uh, and his nickname was Samuel. His nickname was the Boston Ice King. So there it is, a little trivia for you, and a little bar trick action for you. The Boston Ice King, thank you, Frederick, for uh, looking out over that pond of ice and going, hey, I can make money selling ice cubes. Very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a great show planned for you next week as well. I have Shea Court, famous flair bartender Shea Court, uh, joining us to talk to us about uh, traveling Vegas and living in Vegas. She's a fellow Canadian as well, living here in, uh, in the United States. Uh, so we'll, I'm sure we'll certainly chat about that. Uh, and all of her things going on in Vegas, and she's over in Cincinnati now, um, just doing a great job. And we're going to have her on the show. She's been around for a long time. Looking forward to having her. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me and Allison on a, another episode of Behind the Glass with Dean Cerniels. Special thanks to Casey Wallen, who did a great job talking to us about uh, how to create a cocktail. And we will see you next week. But don't forget to join us at 10 o'clock for DNA Trivia.